Um, my first question for you is, Megan took over the world. Were you expecting it to become the phenomenon that it is? No, no. I think I would be an insufferable person to be around if I, <laughs> if I had those expectations. No, I was um, pleasantly surprised, you know, the process of, you know, finishing this movie and then showing it to a small audience and them liking it was like a, a nice surprise. And then we went through test screenings. That was a nice surprise. And then we made a PG-13 version and that still worked. And that was a nice surprise. And then it did what it did. And, and um, you know, obviously the trailer came out and was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Um, so no, I've just been um, on a cloud ever since. The seeing the trailer included was there ever a moment or moments where you were like whoa this is getting huge this is getting out of hand oh uh, constantly and yeah. the, it's been a fun ride like it's been you know I thought maybe if I'm lucky it could take three or four films to get here so yeah. I'm almost like I don't know what to do right now <laughs> I yeah. mean I think you know it's it's just I'm in just a sort of very very fortunate position to have um, been part of a movie that people most people like and most people um wanted to talk about and, and start a conversation i would say that um i thought if we made a doll that was really cool and really uncanny that 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 might get people talking but that was about it i just thought if we make something that no one's ever seen before that's kind of really freaky that's almost realistic i think i think i think that'll strike a chord your it's previous like, film housebound and megan both balance humor and horror in a really interesting way. What is your background or relationship with comedy? Is that a world that you come from? It is actually, yeah. The first thing I did was, uh, the first professional thing I did was a comedy series, a, a, a satirical series um, that started my, friend, started my friend who was a TV presenter working. She was a music VJ working on a current affairs show and having a, a career crisis. And I thought that was hilarious. And I turned that into a show. And 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 Housebound was again kind of a funny idea. I was like, who would be the worst person? I don't know. I, I can't remember what the kernel of the idea was. I think I'd always no, that's right. The kernel of the idea was you've only got two hundred thousand dollars to make this movie. So I was like, okay, well, it's a horror movie. Um, because budget never seems to, but budget seems a uh, low budget seems to be a plus. Um, but but then I just you know comedy always creeps in and I thought well it would be funny if there was a girl in a home detention she was forced to stay there and then on top of that she's living with her mom who's insufferable that's really funny so I was just like okay well that's just a funny idea and so so the the two there's always a marriage between the two yeah and I don't know how many like I love horror like I grew up on Sam Raimi but it's not um, the only thing on my in my diet um, but I certainly lo like like sitting in a room and hearing people reacting it's just the it, it is the best it is the best combination to 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 watch in a theater you know comedy and horror were you surprised by the way that gay culture picked up on megan um a little bit but i had made this other show the jackie brown diaries um my friend her name is jackie brown not the tarantino character um mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with that but she she was a really flawed character uh mm -hmm. <laughs> but people still rooted for her and yeah gay people especially just fucking loved her like they just loved yeah. how she didn't give a fuck and she was and it also helped that she was really stylish like her friend did all her clothes and she just looked really cool and she was just really funny and and i just saw i saw gay people lose their minds over it and so i just kind of thought oh that's cool that, that maybe this will strike maybe this will strike a chord so yeah secretly that was one thing i kind of did think might happen maybe not to the extent that it did but but yeah were you thinking about a possible sequel before one was ever announced and now that there's a date on the books can you tell me how involved you are currently with the new film i'm not uninvolved but i'm not officially Okay. Uh, on it but yes but I'm in, involved but um uh, I yeah I am and I'm talking to them about it at the moment yeah um uh -huh. but no there was never a there's never a um and and I will say to to you know be fair to Blumhouse as well they occasionally like if we were talking about something I might say um we might joke and say well, I worry about that in the sequel worry uh -huh. about that loose thread that didn't tie up in the sequel and they uh -huh. would say 
there's going to be no sequel. It, there has to be, you know. So they're they're really great in that regard. They 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 do really care about making this mm. um, one movie perfect, and I do too. It's just it's just sometimes <laughs> sometimes I I I have this philosophy that if people are having a really good time, they won't care about certain things. Um, but yeah, but um, but no, uh, they. No, that that we just wanted to make one good movie, but it was funny because then as soon as we did that, and I felt like Jesus Christ, we narrowly avoided um, a crash with this with this one because it was so hard to make. You know, it's like oh my god, we freaking got out of it alive, and not only that, people like it. Holy shit! And then to go back into it again was like oh, but at the same time, I learned so much about about it and about her and how to do it and the the methodology and i thought well what a waste if, if all of that knowledge now just kind of goes to waste fans have definitely enjoyed seeing megan and chucky interact online and i think that would be an obvious versus project but besides chucky who would you like to see this character get pitted up against and would you ever consider esther from the orphan films <laughs> um yeah maybe um it's funny it's like I think I just think it would be funny to see Megan pop up in anything like I just think mm-hmm. if, it, if any movie franchise just needs a counterpoint I would just like to see you know Ma- Megan pop up in that I mean it could be a Marvel movie you know I was it could, thinking that too, yeah. yeah it's just like just whatever and I would be perfectly happy to come and help and 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 you know give advice on how the doll works um yeah i i would just i i see her more as you know she's more of a pop culture phenom now than anything i don't i don't see her strictly as just in this horror lane yeah um yeah she could be the next ultron or something like that um the music in the film really got audiences excited whose idea was to put titanium in there and same for toy soldiers <laughs> Well, it was me. I mean, it, part of my job is to <laughs> make it funny and, you know, and, uh, you know, m- make it. Yeah. So so I, I got a script that was a, um, a, more than anything, a template for, well, this is kind of what we want to do. And then so I, you know, rewrote it pretty substantially to kind of um suit my sensibility and and everything and so um so yeah so titanium was was um weirdly titanium came from me thinking about how to do the confrontation at the end between Gemma and megan and thinking that i wanted i I was thinking it'd be funny if megan we did a little stat homage and megan was at the piano so then i was looking up people on the like people playing on a toy piano and this guy was belting out there was this one guy belting out titanium and just going for it and uh-huh. it was amazing and he had an incredible voice and it was just this and i was i was watching it and i was almost getting te- <laughs> cuz i'm such a cynical guy but he was really going for it and i was almost tearing up just like listening to him play titanium and i was like oh my god that this is great because i need this moment in this scene where like megan's reassuring katie after brandon's death and it was just always just feeling like um a very perfunctory scene and that the idea of her singing her lullaby just once again just elevated the whole thing and made it magical and profound and but also really fucked up um Uh so yeah so that that's kind of how that came about my last question for you is if blumhouse gave you carte blanche to any horror franchise have you thought about what you would want um oh god um to any horror franchise mm-hmm. um i'd have to think about that one um i don't know people under the stairs maybe just oh. <laughs> but then again, it's like these are perfect movies you know it's like I, the thing is it's like i have a, i have a really strong belief that like you shouldn't mess with something uh-huh. that's perfect so it would have to be something where I felt like, oh, that that story was cut was cut off and and could go somewhere. I would love like, I, and I've talked to the guys at Ghost House, um, you know, who make Sam Raimi's company. I would love to see a second Drag Me to Hell. I would love to see 
uh justin long go into hell and get his girlfriend back like you know that was a real i love that movie but that was so hardcore that ending you know i was like oh, yeah i don't know if, if they can do it in, in insidious that you know they, they should be able to do it in drag me to hell yeah it's justin long's renaissance year too so perfect time right to- yeah absolutely yeah 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 well, thank you so much for chatting with me today and congrats on all the success. I can't wait to see where it goes. Oh, cool. Thank you. It was great to meet you.